In this video, we're going to diagnose an oxygen sensor. One of the critical things about oxygen sensors is that their voltages change constantly. So it's, it's nearly impossible to diagnose an oxygen sensor with a static display, uh, just a numerical display, like on a typical handheld scan tool. So one of the real powerful things about AutoTap is that we get to use the power of your PC to turn it into a graphing tool so we can see that sensor graphically. So here's exactly how you do that. I've cleared the screen in AutoTap. I'm currently connected to a vehicle. This is a GM van with a V6 engine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a graph. So I put a graph up on the screen. And now I'm going to insert the parameter onto that graph. And what I'm going to look for here is oxygen sensor 1, bank 1, sensor 1. There's a number of oxygen sensors on a, a modern OBD2 vehicle. Uh, there's sensors that are in the engine. Those will always be labeled sensor 1. They're the most likely sensors to fail because they're in a pretty harsh environment. Uh, then there's sensor 2. The sensor 2 job is to monitor the catalytic converter. So sensor 2 is installed further downstream in the exhaust actually behind your catalytic converter. This video is going to focus only on sensor 1. So I'm going to scroll down to oxygen sensor. There it is, oxygen sensor bank 1, sensor 1. You can also see I have a bank 1 sensor 2. That's the sensor downstream in the exhaust that I mentioned. Okay, so I'm going to insert on that into my graph. I'm going to make this graph a bit bigger so it's easier to see. And I am connected to the vehicle right now. The vehicle has the ignition on, but the engine is off. Now the engine is warmed up here, so I'm going to start it in just a, a couple seconds. You can see right now in the left axis there, that uh, I'm at about 100 millivolts right now. Auto tip will allow you to set this axis if you want to set some limits on there, um, but it'll also automatically adjust it to the appropriate voltage, uh, so we don't really have to do anything there. Okay, so now I'm going to start the vehicle. Now oxygen sensors don't do anything till they're warmed up to about 300 degrees or so. So if you just start a cold vehicle, it's going to take a, a good number of seconds for that oxygen sensor to become active. Uh, so we're going to let this warm for just a, a few seconds. As I mentioned, this vehicle has been warmed up a bit, so it won't take very long. And then what we're going to look for is rapid switching between a high and low voltage. That's the, the rich and lean condition. An oxygen sensor is really a, just a switch. It can tell you if you're richer than, than desirable or leaner than desirable, and the fuel system in a fuel-injected vehicle oscillates back and forth between rich and lean, and that's how it controls and stays right in that perfect average uh, fuel mixture. So now I'm at idle, and my sensor has clearly warmed up a bit here, and my fuel system is closed loop, and I'm, I'm oscillating as I'd expect to. So what I'm looking for here is that I'm, I'm getting down to a, a low voltage, down around a couple hundred millivolts or so, and I'm oscillating up to a higher voltage, up above 700 millivolts. And what's really important is that I'm switching quickly back and forth between rich and lean and rich and lean. Several failure modes of an oxygen sensor. With failed wiring, you'll just get a zero voltage with a bad connector or a totally failed sensor. What you typically see as oxygen sensors age is they'll get very slow reacting. So you're not going to get these rapid cycles between rich and lean. Now I'm going to rev the engine up to a couple thousand RPM here to kind of a cruising speed. When you first step on the gas, what you'll see is the engine run a little bit richer because it's the condition that the engine can make a little bit more power in. And then after things kind of stabilize after a few seconds, you'll see that the oxygen sensor now is switching much more rapidly. So that's a good sign of a nice healthy oxygen sensor. That's the type of behavior we'd expect to see. So that's what you should look for uh, when you diagnose the oxygen sensor on your car. When the oxygen sensor does fail, you'll get some symptoms such as your fuel economy will go down. Uh, you might have uh, rough running, uh, hesitation, off idle, poor power, uh, a number of different kinds of behaviors like that where your engine's just not running as smoothly and as efficiently as it could be. So it's always a good idea, especially on uh, engines with maybe more than 50,000 miles, to go in and look at those oxygen sensors and be sure they're behaving properly. And of course, anytime you have a check engine light, the oxygen sensor is one of the first things to look at because it is such a, plays such a critical role in the OBD2 system.